geometric sequences. Uh, geometric sequence is a uh, sequence that has a common ratio between uh, each pair of consecutive terms, consecutive meaning each term there, uh, one right after another. So in other words, each term is being multiplied by the same value um, to obtain the next term. So when you multiply a number by a continuum, when you multiply a set of numbers continually by the same thing, you get what's called a sequence. Okay. So to decide whether or not a sequence is geometric, meaning you're multiplying, or arithmetic, which means you're adding the same thing each time, or neither, which means it may be some other pattern. Um, what we're going to do first is to look at a set of numbers and see if we're multiplying by the same thing. So in this case, 5 times what is 15? That's 3. 15 times 3 is 45, and 45 times 3 is 135. So since we're multiplying by the same thing each time, it is a geometric sequence. That is what a geometric sequence is. Now, it also says if it's geometric, write the next three terms. So if we continually multiply by 3, so if we go 135 times 3, uh, we get 405. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and list the next ones here. 405 times 3 is 1,215. And then 1,215 times 3 is 3,645. Okay, well, here, um, 20 times what is 50? Well, if you can't tell, remember, you can always do the second term divided by the first. So 50 divided by 20 actually would be 2 and a half. Okay, so that means to get from here to here, you're multiplying by 2.5. Okay, well, that would mean you'd have to do 80 divided by 50, and it also has to be 2.5, and that is not 2.5. That is 8 fifths, which is 1.6 there. Okay. So that does not work. So uh, multiplying by the same thing didn't work. So let's go ahead and try adding. So 20 plus what is 50? That's 30. 50 plus what is 80? That's also 30. Yep, and it looks like we're adding 30 here as well. Okay, so this would be arithmetic. Now, just so you know, I probably would have tried the adding first, but I'm trying to emphasize the geometric. Therefore, I showed uh, the multiplication there. All right, so um, so if you're trying the adding first here, you know, I'm actually adding a negative or subtracting. I'd have to be subtracting, uh, looks like 120, and obviously that is not happening here, so we're not going to use that. Um, looks like if I multiply, I'm actually dividing by 4, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of 4, 1 4. And that actually happens here as well. Okay, so I'm dividing by 4, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And 10 divided by 4, 10 times 1 fourth is 2.5. So it works out, this is geometric. Okay, and uh, the next three terms would be uh, 2.5 times 1 fourth, and keeping it in decimal form would be 0 0.625. And then 0 0.625 divided by 4 times 1 fourth is 0 0.15625. Kind of writing these up here. And then times 1 fourth, 0 0.039065. Holy cow, that's quite the decimal. There are next three terms. Okay. Um, the last one here like I'd have to be adding 10 and I'm definitely not adding 10 there so that doesn't work um, 18 8 uh, which becomes 9 fourths okay so about two and a quarter um, that might work here 42 18 which if we reduce it uh, that becomes 21 9 which reducing that is 7 thirds Okay, these two things are not equal, and we can't reduce any more. Therefore, this is not geometric nor arithmetic. Therefore, it is neither. 
Okay. Now we never explained. <clears throat> An explanation could be as simple as saying, hey, multiplying by three. Okay. Um, adding 30 each time. That depends how um, technical your teacher is wanting you to get, but I'm multiplying by a fourth. Okay, showing multiplication. Neither, uh, no common difference or ratio. Okay, so neither stating that you don't have a common difference or ratio. All right, well, let's go ahead and try another uh, concept here. All right, so let's go ahead and graph these. Now, um, generally what I'd have you do is I'd have you try this on your own, and hopefully you'd figure out that really what you're doing when you're graphing these is you're looking at a position, and that position we call N, and that gives you a term, and that term we call A sub N. Okay, and so the way we, like normally you'd have a table, so that would be, say, my table. This would be position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4, and position 5. So if you're thinking about it, in terms of your table, this is your N, this is your A sub N. Okay, and when you're looking at your axis, since all we're dealing with positives on N and positives on A sub N, I really just like in a normal table, your top is your x, your bottom is your y. So really, n is the same thing as your x value, and a sub n is the same thing as your y value. So if I'm labeling my axes, this would be the a sub n axis. Excuse me, I messed that up. This would be your n axis, and this would be your a sub n axis. Okay, and so now I can, I'm going to go ahead and fill this out rather than kind of the handwritten one I have up there. Okay. And notice I can't go, I can go up by ones on the X or the N axis. But I can't go up by ones on the A sub N. So what I'm going to do, since I want to get to 81, I'm going to go ahead and go up by 10, which is going to bring me to 90 right there. And the way I'm going to define that and set that scale is just by putting 90 up there. Okay. Uh, if you'd want to, you could label all of them, you know, 10, 20, and so on. I am not going to do that, but, okay. So 1 and 81, that's going to be like right there. 2 and 27, I'm going to be closer to 30 than 20. 3 and 9, 4 and 3, and then 5 and 1. All right, whoops. That point's going to disappear. There we go. And so if I go ahead and sketch that in, let's see if I can do this without accidentally changing my slide. You know what? I didn't hit all the points. Let's try that one more time here. All right. I sketched that in. That really looks like exponential decay. Looks like as x is increasing, y is decreasing. Okay, exponential decay, we got that decay curve there. Okay. Well, and if we're looking at it and kind of thinking about our decay, notice what's happening here is I'm multiplying by one third every time. And that one third is my common ratio. Oops, not one half, but one third. So yeah, it for sure is exponential decay. Um, my ratio, not R, big R, R equals one third. Well, you remember in previous lessons, we actually called that our base. So our base is actually one third. So B and R are the same thing. B and R are the same thing there. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this next one. Once again, I'm not gonna write as position, I'm just gonna put in, and I'll call this A sub N. So in the first position, we have three. Second position, we have 6. Third, we have 12. Fourth, 24. And fifth, we have 48. Oops. Actually, labeled it as fifth, 48. Okay. We have our 
a sub n, and we have our n. And we got 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And let's see, 1, 3, you know what, I'm going to go up by 5s this time, which is going to bring me to 45 there. I only have to get to about 48. So uh, 1, 3, that means each one of these is 5. So we're about right there. Uh, 2, 6. And 312. If I hold my pin there too long, it does that. 4, 24, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So 24 is about there. And 548. All right. Right about there. So you'll notice with this curve, it really looks like exponential growth. And if it is growth, that means our B term has to be greater than 1. Let's see. Yeah, we'll multiply by 2 times 2. In fact, we keep doing that all the way. So B, which we know is the same thing as our common ratio, is 2 here. Okay? So what do you notice? Well, these are exponential func functions. And that's all a geometric sequence is, is um, they can be written as exponential functions. So hopefully you're making that connection there. And so what we want to be able to do is to quickly be able to write an exponential function in a form that is easily understood um, uh, how it re it's easily understood how it relates to um, our exponential function y equals a b to the power of x. Okay, so I'm going to try to relate these two things here. So let's fill out this table and hopefully that'll help out. Let's consider the sequence 1, 5, 25, 1, 25. So notice if we do that, um, considering that, we have to multiply each time by 5. That is our R term. And remember, R is B. Okay? So when we're saying R, we're really thinking B as well. Okay? And A sub 1, A sub 1 means the first term. So maybe making a note to yourself the first term. And the first term is 1. Alright, so in position 1, which we're calling in, we have term 1. In the form of A, we call that A sub 1. The second position, we have 5, and we call that A sub 2. The third position, we have 25, we call that A sub 3. The fourth position, we have 125, so we call that a sub 4. So if we want any position at all, whatever position, if we say the 100th position, we call it a sub 100. The 29th position, we call it a sub 29. So when we're saying a position, we say a sub whatever. So a sub n is our generic form. And what we want to do is to be able to relate a sub 1 and r when writing our new function. So if I want to get to the value of 1 that I currently have at term 1, okay, if I want to get there, how do I get there using a sub 1 and r? Well, that's pretty easy. Um, if, if, if I want 1 and I can use a sub 1, I just say, well, all I'm doing is taking a sub 1 and writing it down. a sub 1 is 1. Okay, so that would give me 1 equals 1. It's a little bit more difficult if I want the second term. Well, the second term is 5. And I can only use a sub 1, which we know is 1, and r. Well, how do I get from 1 to the second term of 5? Well, I could multiply the first term, 1, by the ratio. Right, which is 5. And that would give me a sub 1, which is 1, times the ratio, which is 5, which would give me 5. Well, how do I get to the third term of 25? Well, if I want it to equal 25, I could start with the first term again, a sub 1, and I could multiply by r, not once, but twice. Say, well, r times r. 
okay? Which, by the way, we call that a sub 1 times r to the second power, which would give me 1 times 5 times 5. Or the other way of writing that is 1 times 5 to the second power. All right, well, hopefully you're starting to see the pattern here. So if I want to get to 125, my fourth term, I start out with a sub 1. I could multiply by r three times. So times r, times r, times r, which is a sub 1 times r to the third power. Okay, kind of make, clean that up a bit. All right, which would be 1 times 5 to the third, which gives me that 125. So really, if I want to get to a sub n, this is where we kind of make the connections, I hope. If I want to get to any term, okay, how do I get there? Well, I am keep multiplying by a sub 1 every time. And then notice every time I've multiplied by r, except for right here, I didn't really multiply by r. Okay, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, but this would be a sub um, 1 times r, I just need to figure out the power. Well, let's see, could we somehow tie it to the number? So the position is 4, the power is 3. The position is 3, the power is 2. The position is 2, the power is actually, well it's 1. And when the position is 1, the power is actually 0. Remember, anything to the 0 power is 1, so this just cancels out. All right, so really what I'm doing is I am taking, and hopefully you notice this, um, I'm to figure out what power I'm using, I'm actually going, each time I'm doing 1 less than what n is. Notice 3 is my power, and n is 4. 2 is my power, n is 3. 1 is my power, n is 2. 0 is my power, n is 1. So really this is to the n minus 1 power. Okay, and that would actually mean I could go that times 5 to the n minus 1. And so that would mean really if I wanted to find any term, I could use this equation. So that means a sub n is equal to that. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. So if a sub n is the nth term of a geometric se sequence with the first term being a sub 1 and the common ratio of r, then the nth term, remember nth term just means any term, any term we ever want to use, is given by this equation. And this equation, by the way, can be written as a function. We just change a sub n. Remember, a sub n is kind of just like y. Okay? We just change that to f of n, and then everything else stays the same. So if you see that, that's really all it means. And note what we're doing here, how it relates to our exponential function up here. y equals ab to the x. Well, y, remember, we're just calling a sub n. a is a sub 1, our first term. Okay. And we're actually going to see um, a sub 1 is, um, th this actually is changing up will change up a bit because here this is actually the y-intercept and a sub 1 is not our y-intercept. It's actually a sub 0 is our y-intercept. Okay, um, But we'll talk about we'll talk about what happens there. But this is similar. Okay, So um, I'm going to actually make a note that that's a sub 0. And then r to the our power is n minus 1. Okay, So x is like n. All right. So really, they're very similar. I don't want to confuse it a lot, but um, they're very similar in terms of what we're doing here. This will change it up a bit. And we'll talk about that actually in our next lesson. All right, so let's try to apply this here. If I want to find any term now, okay, so for instance, write an equation for the nth term of the sequence 3, 12, 48, 192. Okay, well remember, in order to write the equation, a sub n is equal to a sub 1, times r to the n minus 1. First thing, you need to know what a sub 1 is. Well, that's pretty easy. a sub 1 is 3. Second, you need to know what r is. Well, r isn't too bad either. 
just 12 divided by 3 is 4. 48 divided by 12 is 4, and 192 divided by 48 is 4. So really, we're multiplying by 4 each time here. So this is going to be r is 4. That means my equation a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which is 3, times r, which is 4. We put that in parentheses to the n minus 1. There is my, my equation for the geometric sequence. Now to find a sub 9, a sub 9, notice if I have my a sub n is equal to 3 times 4 to the n minus 1, well, n just becomes 9. So a sub 9 is equal to 3 times 4 to the, well, n becomes 9, 9 minus 1, or 3 times 4 to the 8th power. And 3 times 4 to the 8th power is 196,000. 608. That is the ninth term. So a sub n is equal, or excuse me, a sub 9. Actually, let's write that up there. a sub 9 equals 196,608. Okay, let's go ahead and try one more here, and I think we'll be done. Uh, write an equation for the nth term of the geometric sequence. Well, first, once again, we want to find a sub 1. a sub 1, 486, the first term. Hey, what are we multiplying by? Well, you, you'd you have to do, um, you know, 162 divided by 486. Okay, and then 54 divided by 162. And then 18 divided by 54. And what you'd find out is each one of those reduces to one-third, okay? So you are multiplying by r, which is one-third. So writing our equation, we have a sub n is equal to 486 times one-third to the n minus one power. To find the seventh term, we're going to go a sub 7 is equal to 486 times one-third to the 7 minus 1, or 486 times one-third to the 6, which is two-thirds. Now, I know this will give you 0.3333, and this will give you 0 0.6666. You need to put them in fraction form, okay, if they don't terminate. All right, well, let's see. Yep, that's all I got for you. Good luck.